to make a apology video for the last video because it was like good. It was weird. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. I got All right. I'm good now. So we're gonna do just some. We're gonna go into survival with Minecraft. Something that represented this kind of cultural. And hopefully we can survive this whole thing. Also, I might make a repost of what I just did. So, or just tell you what I just did. On there. Go back to where I was. I last started. So we got some wood. And then we can go get some wood, wood plants. Then get some. We have to get a coffee table, definitely, and some sticks. Sixteen. And then now I gotta place this and gonna make me a pickaxe and a sword and then axe. Let's go down here. If you have a post and a puzzle as your process and a high I'm like, man, can't be over. I mean, he does edit videos for like 24 hours. I'm not even gonna lie. And it's hard for editing. So like, I don't even edit myself. I don't edit, but I know it's hard. So like he does this for 24 hours again. He likes he likes doing videos for us, but like he has to take a break at one point. Like at some point. Dennis Edwards was one of the best singers in the history of R&B soul music and one of the best of the Temptations. He was the one that could jump up, right. sing, dance at any given moment, always full of energy and always kept a smile on his face. It was his Let's voice that carried the Temptations through their most memorable time. And it was his voice that came to the final Temptations vocally like throughout the 1970s and into the 1980s. Now, Dennis so, Edwards was born February 3rd, 1943 in Fairfield, Alabama, about eight but miles from Birmingham. You know, his father, who was a reverend, armor, moved the family to Detroit, Michigan when Dennis was around 10 years cold, old. Though. And he the, was singing in his father's mind. church. Eventually, Jesus he took over as choir here. director, joining the gospel act, The Mighty Clouds of Joy, by the time he was a teenager. Even though Dennis knew he could sing, he really wanted to be a factory I'm done. worker like I'm everybody so done. else. There's that no cold down here. Time. There's no cold once he graduated down here. High school, he ended up like, joining no the army cold. for a little short period. When he returned from the military and went back home, right. Barry Gordy and his Motown record label was the hottest thing in the world at the time. Oh, shoot. Even though it was forbidden for him to sing secular so music because he was raised in the church. But now, all of his friends were singing that type of music, trying to break into the industry. And plus, he was inspired by his idol, Sam Cooke, who did the same thing. In 1961, he put together his own band called Dennis Edwards and the Fireballs, hoping to score a deal with Motown. One day, while performing at a small club, one of Barry Gordy's producers from the oh, Funk Brothers wanna, liked there, Dennis' there, voice there, 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 and got him an audition for Motown Records. Now, Barry Gordy loved Dennis' voice so, too, but he didn't have the time to work on I'm music really with him on because here. he had a lot of other artists on his label at the time. On, on here. So what Barry Gordy did was put him on a retainer, signing him to a work for yeah, hire contract, filling in for so. acts when needed. Yeah. You know, the also, first two years with Motown, Dennis was getting like... $250 to $300 a week just for being on the roster because Barry Gordy, he had no work for him at the time. But until one day, 
He okay. got that call. I might have just that one of the Contours lead table. singers got really I'm sick while they were on tour as an opening act for the Temptations. And he was needed to I'm fill in. Now, this. Dennis ended up becoming the lead singer for the Contours, recording the 1967 R&B Top 30 it. hit, oh, It's So Hard Being freaky. a Loser. And your love grows more precious yep, every day. Me. It's under me. But while touring with the Temptations, Dennis okay, became update. good friends with all of the members, like, cool. especially David Ruffin. Okay. During that time, the Temptations was tired of David Ruffin and was having problems with him, his lifestyle, and the way he lived during that time. David Ruffin told Dennis Edwards that the Temptations were going to kick him out of the group and ask him to take his place. Okay. Sure enough, the next day, okay, just because you Dennis said that, that I'm going to leave you alone. He couldn't refuse the offer. Hey, 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 you over here. You now there with, with the dump truck. You over there with the dump truck. An upset David Ruffin yeah, would crash the stage while Dennis Edwards was saying he vocal say on move or out of bed. Everywhere they went for months. Three, so the group decided two, to hold off on Dennis with the promise of a one. solo deal for Motown. Now you want to say it. David Not, Ruffin back you didn't have anything inside of Once David it. Ruffin continued with his behavior, and not show up for the shows, they put Dennis Edwards back in the group permanently yes. this time. Now, Dennis' vocals will give the Temptations a string of hits, such as Cloud Nine, I Can't Get Next to You, Ball of Confusion, That's What the World Is Today, Papa Was a Rolling Stone, and Shaky Ground. The singles Cloud Nine and Papa Was a Rolling Stone won Grammy Awards. It was the very first Grammy Awards for the Motown label. Also during that time, he started dating Aretha Franklin. Her 1972 classic song, Daydreaming, was about Dennis as the two fell in love and were close to marriage okay, so until Dennis was caught cheating with Ruth Pointer of the Pointer yep. Sisters. In 1977, Dennis began to bump heads with members Melvin Franklin and I Otis Williams. No call. Angry that Motown were focusing too much on Dennis as lead vocalist, plus they didn't like Dennis' cocaine drug habit, so he ended up leaving the group in 1977. But in 1980, he rejoined the Temptations, performing with ex-members David Ruffin and Eddie Kendricks for the reunion album and the tour. The reunion I'm sorry, and the guys. tour. Fell apart I'm have to due cheat. to David Ruffin's I drug feel, habit and Dennis so Edwards sorry. missing I'm shows and rehearsals. Once I'm again, a solo artist and back to Motown Records, Dennis released his 1984 hit, Don't yeah, Look like, Any really, Further, which cheat. peaked at number two on the Billboard Black Singles charts and number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100. In the UK, that song peaked at number 45, pushing his album to number two on the R&B charts. The song Don't Look Any Further was also sampled by Biggie Smalls and the Junior Mafia for their hit, Get Money, as a remix. In 1987, The Temptations got back together again, but Dennis Edwards was fired from the group for the third and final time in late 1988. Over the years, most of the Temptation members passed on. I'm sorry. David Ruffin would die I from a cocaine sorry. overdose in 1991 and Eddie Kendricks died from lung cancer in 1993. Melvin Franklin fell into a diabetic coma and died in 1995. Yeah, boy. I'm sorry. Franklin oh, sure. fell into a diabetic coma and died in 1995. Later on in life, sorry, guys. Dennis Edwards would tour and continue to make music throughout his career. But in 2017, Dennis Edwards fell ill. It's just one simple thing. Which made him a quadriplegic, leaving him bed bound and immobile. Even though he was on a lot of medications and was reportedly depressed and paranoid. Wait, it's because now, it's Dennis head. Edwards' daughter, who was it's reported his power head. attorney, was always said she me? never heard his doctor say he had meningitis. But see, Dennis Edwards' now wife, Brenda Edwards, decided to move him from his St. Louis home to a luxury high-rise apartment building in Chicago. While in Chicago, Dennis took a nasty fall and was taken to the hospital. An anonymous tipster called the state hotline and said Brenda Edwards had abused Dennis. When a caseworker had visited him in his apartment, Dennis told them that his wife was trying to kill him. 
by suffocating him, holding his face down in a pillow, and she took his hearing aids away from him. The caseworker called the police and had Dennis Edwards removed from the house. The caseworker even filed an emergency order of protection, claiming Brenda was a threat to Dennis. Brenda Edwards hired her own lawyer to challenge the order of protection, but Dennis died a day before she was supposed to appear in court. So the emergency protective order that she had against her was clear. But the final autopsy report on Dennis Edwards' death by the Cook County Medical Examiner yeah, found have no to make signs another of abuse, one. ruling he died due to the complications of meningitis. In yeah, an I'm interview on CBS, Brenda Edwards said she loved Dennis and they were married for 18 years. She would have never done anything to harm him and the allegations are false. But Dennis Edwards' daughters think differently. He was 74 years old. R.I.P. Dennis Edwards. Okay, y'all can't hear this music, but I can. It's actually kind of cool. Marshall instructions for free light malarkey. We'll take care of it. Smart home. The heck? On. No, oh, give me that. I have no commentary. I just noticed that I have no commentary, bro. My commentary is tr dry. The what you talking about? Like literally, it's dry. Dried and watered down biscuits, bro. Like, I don't know why, but I'm not. I'm always. No. I have no. I am. The National Football League. It seems like owners are taking more chances on black quarterbacks to lead the team now. Oh, shoot. I'm not Most African-American quarterbacks are considered running quarterbacks. Hold on. And it seems like more and more so teams are that. going with that type of play style rather than the old traditional quarterbacks. I mean, you had Doug Williams, who became the first black quarterback drafted in the first round to win a Super Bowl. Michael Vick was the first black quarterback ever to be selected number one overall. Warren Moon became the first black quarterback inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. But this episode is about Steve McNair, who became the first black quarterback <gasps> to win the iron, NFL's iron, MVP. Iron, I found iron. And on the field, I found iron. he was an amazing athlete. Jesus Christ. I found an iron. All around raw talent. You cannot beat me now. I found iron. You're back. It's just you have so no sad the way his life would end. Iron, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Steve McNair was come born here. on Valentine's yes. Day, February 14th, 1973, in Mount Olive, Mississippi. Iron, guys. Now, see, iron. growing up, it was very country farm like where Steve was from. Every day they had to feed the chickens and the pigs picked their vegetables. It was very poor. Now see, Steve had four brothers and was raised by his mother, who worked a lot, but she made sure her boys stayed out of trouble. And his father was really never in his life. And all of them were athletic, especially Steve's older brother, Fred, who was the star quarterback for the high school. Now, by the time Steve became a freshman, he was an all around star in football, Basketball, track, I just know I have to have coal. He was even offered a contract by the baseball Bro. team, Seattle Mariners, to play for them, but I his mother wanted game. him to stay in school. And I'm just playing. I don't need this game. Why am I playing now, anything? Steve was so good, he was offered a full scholarship to the University of Florida to play defensive back, but Steve wanted to play quarterback. So he chose Alcorn State, a historically black university, because they were the only school that gave him that option to play quarterback, plus it was close to his home. Now, black civil rights activist Mega Elvers, who was shot and killed by the Ku Klux Klan in his driveway, also graduated from that school with Alcorn State. But anyway, now, when Steve got to Alcorn State, he set all types of career records for the school with over 14,000 passing yards. Can I please give me coal? As well as a division please. record for total offensive yards. Because all I'm, all I'm, all I'm yards. getting that is nothing. Today. But I mean, iron. At Alcorn State, I mean iron is actually kind of cool because why would I, I wouldn't be able to get this pickaxe. 
and every but game I the stadium need... was filled with fans oh, and celebrities me cold. just to see him play. He even won the Walter Payton Award and finished I third in I swear, voting, there's actually the cold Heisman Trophy here. Award that year, losing to cry. Sean Salam. The there's hype no around the stadium was so big at the time, especially in the black community, because in the NFL during those days, all right, time left. I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it. Let me pause until it's like mine. All right. I'm still mine. Let's see. 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 Let's Finally getting his chance to show his skills. Also that same year, Steve married uh, his college sweetheart, Michelle. Later on, him and Michelle had two sons. And Steve also had Cole? two older boys is that, from is that previous Cole? relationships. Two years later, I really that, thought that was Cole right there. The Houston Oilers became the Tennessee Titans after owner Bud Adams couldn't get the Swear, there's nothing. There's Houston. literally nothing. And that 1999 season... Steve led the team to a 13 and 3 regular season record, taking them all the way to play in Super Bowl 34, only to be defeated by the St. Louis Rams 23 to 16. But right after that, he signed that new six year contract worth $50 million with the Tennessee Titans. And during that time, I'm mining Steve until was I get some. God to the state of Tennessee. Everybody if loved him. I he even started the Steve McNair Foundation I'm be mad. to benefit youth charities. And I'm a be big man. I don't even care. I'm big man. In 1999 at um, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Some of the kids that attended the camp over those years became NFL stars like Cam Newton and Vince Young. In 2003, time lapse. Time lapse. Eating, All right. He put a down payment on a Cadillac a... Escalade for a birthday. He started to put I mean, some coal already, count. like after he 24 took hours. To places such as Florida, Hawaii, and Las Vegas. Neighbors say they saw Steve and Jenny together so much that they yeah, thought he was already living loop, together. Give me the loop. Now, see, Steve told Jenny right. he was divorcing his wife. we going and over that there to the melter. So they can get married. And, and Jenny was ready. I have four. She had put all her stuff up for sale on Craigslist, sold the furniture and everything. I have to mine 200 see, hours again. Steve was to go, ready to go some coal? Because some coal, bro? Am I there? I'm doing a part two. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, doing a part two. And Jenny had caught wind of Steve right. cheating on her. And she was ready to let my brothers and sisters. So okay. she began I am about to do the court She I told about her to friends that it. she found a tampon in his bathroom trash can. And one day she saw another woman leaving Steve's condo. So she followed her. Now, Steve's mistress, a woman named Leah, Bro, confirmed that she was having an affair with Steve. Hit my and mom. said she and saw Jenny in the black Escalade. Following her, like circling her block, breathing. and then parked outside her apartment. Jenny's friends told scared, her that bro, Steve but was I just playing her, but on, so like, Jenny heck? was still in love with him, and she thought she was pregnant. All right, so bye. she made plans to.